Listeners, good day to every one of you who have tuned in to Majesty Christian Television Network. My name is Apostle Helen Ruth Dokeno of Rivers of Life Bible Church, where Jesus reigns as Lord. I believe that you have enjoyed this day that is Palm Sunday, and you have celebrated it with Christ Jesus. And I believe also that the, 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 the season is going to bring you into uh, more focus. It's going to bring more clarity to you. And it's going to make you to step into another level of your life, which Christ is calling us onto. You are going to step into this new month uh, uh, in, in humility and in in. In, 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 in patience, you are going to receive more and more, more ability to, 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 to function in this virtue, which is necessary for our upgrowing in Christ and necessary for our advancement and for our success. The Bible, as we celebrate today in remembrance of uh, 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 the, the triumphant entry of Christ and in preparation for uh, his uh, death and the resurrection. I want to believe that the, 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 this particular season, the, the, what it is connoting, have really uh, uh, entered into your heart. Uh, it's all about humility. It's all about patience. It's all about enduring to receive what God has called us to, 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 to be. Enduring to receive it, the patience, the virtue, that that of or that will that will make our Christian life to be enhanced to endure suffering and also know that in the midst of suffering that we have not been forgotten by God that th th there's going to be a celebration and there's going to be an elevation. Can I hear a good amen? I welcome you also to this very new month. May the Lord bless you, you and your household, you and your friends, and you and those that love you. Shall we pray? 
Father, I want to thank you for all my listeners this evening, and I bless you for their wonderful lives, and I want to thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that is upon us and upon them. I bless you, Lord, that through this channel that you are going to impact somebody's life. I want to thank you, Lord, that they will be healed, and those who have fallen astray, Lord, that they will come back to you, and those, oh God, who are having guilt, they will be set free, and those who are demon possessed shall be made whole. I want to thank you that the word of the Lord as he goes forth right now, oh God, God, that it shall set the captives free. I thank you and I bless you that miracles shall be performed even by this utterance as they come and that my listeners shall be made whole and they will enjoy the fullness of this day and this season in Jesus mighty name. With thanksgiving I pray. Can you joyfully say amen? Yes, let's go quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 21. And I want to read from verse 1. I believe that this scripture is very popular today. I, I believe that many people, are, many preachers like me are going to read this particular scripture. So do not be tired. Maybe you may have heard it from your own church and you are hearing it again and again. This is the season for such a scripture. Now let's read from uh, verse 1. The Bible says, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to uh, uh, Bethesda at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead. With this instruction, go to the village. If that Bible be yours, I want you to mark it. Go to the village. Go to the village there ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. Verse 3. And if anyone says anything, anyone, anyone, tell him the master, the master needs them. And then he will let them go at once. Verse 6, it goes to verse 6. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. <laughs> they did exactly what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the cord, threw their clothes over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their clothes on the road, while others cut branches from the tree and spread them on the road. Verse 9, the crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Be to God. Praise be to God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. Jesus went into the temple and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the stools of those who sold pigeons and said to them, It is written in the scripture that God said, My temple will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a hideout for thieves. The blind and the crippled came to him in the temple and he healed them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. He healed them all. He healed them all. As many that came to Jesus all the time, he always heals them. That's very good news. I am so excited over this scripture, honestly speaking. Uh, the, 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 the authority that Jesus Christ has has the authority that rages all around him i mean he, was, he is always a man of 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 of, 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 of um, authority uh, he, he is he is so confident yes i beg your pardon that's what i i want to say very very confident don't forget this hour i'm bringing to you the miracles of jesus christ and then the topic is enduring to receive from god Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, so this, this, this just tells us about what happens uh, uh, this very time we are celebrating, this very day we are celebrating, 2,000 years ago, uh, when Jesus walked along the street of, of, of Jerusalem and they were hailing him, the king, and, uh, and they were putting the palm trees and uh, they, they, uh, they were putting the leaves all over. Some were spreading their expensive, garment on the road and then the donkey and the cord they had to ride on that and then Jesus sat on them and then they were hailing him the king of the Jews you know they held him and held him and held him promoted him before they began to crucify him 
<laughs> oh my God, my God, my God, my God. We got to be very, very careful about those who always want to honor us, who always want to heap us with praises, who always want to, you know, lift us up too much. Because these very same people, they are the people who are likely to crucify you. The very same people who are heaping on us. Look, if they did it to Jesus Christ, then you have to know that the same principle is applicable. Because if they did it to our master, then that, that, that has to show you a very big lesson that that is how it is. That is how it is. That the same people... You know, I'm, I'm so tired of people calling me false names, you know. I, I, so, I, I, so people calling me what in their heart they really don't mean. Because some say, you are my mother, you are my this, you are my that. But in their heart, they know that they are not, they are not acting properly. They know that, 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 that I, I, they don't even give me the honor which I'm supposed to have as a mother. And they, they just hit me with those praises and they feel maybe I do not know that they are, they are just trying to, 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 to bribe me or corrupt me with their, with their uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 honors, which, which are not, can't, uh, which can't fit honors, which are not real. And then, and then I try to become very sensitive when people act and address me in those ways because I begin to look. I hope you don't become somebody who will crucify me, who will go at my back and begin to say things which you are not supposed to say about me. Because it is so surprising that after they held Jesus Christ, they held him, they called him, Hosanna, 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 this is the son of David, this is the Jesus of Nazareth, this is the, the, our king, he has come. And after they did that, throw their cloaks all around, and he walked through, and he marched through with the donkey, and after just a while, just one week after that, behold, they crucified him, sentenced him to death. He gave up his life, and at the same time, he resurrected. My Lord and my God, you got to pass through some processes before you become who God wants you to be. And I want somebody who have tuned in to Majesty Christian Television channel for you to know that wherever process that God brings you into. Please, endure it. Go through it with humility. Sometimes you're going to go through desertion. Sometimes you're going to go through heartbreakage. Sometimes you're going to go through uh, a radical. Sometimes people who, who you never believed could have left you will leave you. They will abandon you at a time you thought they would have been there for you. Uh, and uh, that can bring a heartache in your heart. Please, go through all of those seasons. Go through all of those seasons because at the end, Christ will be glorified. Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? These days, many people are not really enduring to receive. Many people are not enduring to, 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 to receive that which will make them proper Christians. They don't want to go through hardship. They don't want to go through humility. But the story revealed of humility and patience, of even donkey and a court. How about you? How about you? Hallelujah. You see, humility and patience, they are required. For us, they, require, they, 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 they are required if we are going to go forward in life. They, 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 are, they are required if we are going to go a step further in what God wants us to be. The humility and patience will require you to obey certain instructions, certain commands, certain orders, even when they do not appeal to your senses. But you are required to do those things. So the scripture mentioned about Jesus Christ sending the disciple. The Bible says he called two disciples and he sent them to a particular place. What am I trying to say? You see, the God that we serve is a God of accuracy. He is a God of principle. Are you hearing me, somebody? He is a God that, that, that does not make any mistake. If God wants to do something, there, there is no half measure to it. And there is no shortcut to it. When God wants something, he is very specific about that thing which he wants us to do for him. That's why uh, from, uh, from Genesis to the book of Revelation, we have always read and we have always seen a God that is so precise in whatever he wants to do. He, 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 he is so accurate in whatever he wants to do. He is, he, he, he is, he is he, when he says it, he is going to do it. When he instructs that things be given to him in this manner, there is no half measure about it. Are you hearing me, somebody? There is no half measure. God, 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 God is a principle 
principled God. He is a principled God and he's a God of precision. He is a God that when he instructs you to do something, he doesn't come tomorrow and say, oh, you know, I made a mistake. Like some people, they will open up their mouth and they will heap up some prophecies which are nothing but false, false, false. And then when it doesn't come to mind, they say, oh, I didn't know, maybe I didn't hear correctly. Hey! Oh, but God said, God said to me, but if God said to me or God said to you, is that God going to turn around and make mistake now? Is God gonna, has it ever been said that God made a mistake? And that is the reason why we got to be very, very careful the voice we are hearing. We got to be very careful how we rush into a calling which we have not yet been called into its fullness. We have to be very, very, very careful. Are you hearing me, somebody looking at me, dear? We got to be very, very, very careful. There are some of us who have made very big mistakes just because we could not wait at the right time when God wants that thing to be done. So we rush into it. Like those of you who are leading, or you are leading praise and worship team. But you are leading praise and worship team doesn't make you a pastor. Are you hearing me, somebody? It doesn't make you a pastor because some of you lead prayers and worship for three years, four years before you know it, you go jump out and go and form your own church. Is that what God told you? Is that what God told you? There are some of you who come to pastors and you say, make me your intercessor and they make you the intercessor. And as they make you the intercessor, before you know it, you begin to reveal every single thing. You gather one person, gather two people in the church. Let's pray for our pastor's wife. Let's pray for our pastor. Oh, I see this and I saw that. And then, and then when you give them those messages and they are not ready to take it from you, you jump out from that church because you jump out and you go to another place and you say, oh, that place is this way and that place is that way. Is that what God told you? Is that what God told you? You that is listening to me, is that what God told you? It, does God find himself making mistakes all the time? I am so sick and so tired of believers who, have, who are unbaked, who are unbaked, who are not ready to be baked. They are not ready to be processed. That you interpreted, interpreted in, in, in a conference, does that make you not a preacher? Some will go, just go and uh, print their business cards and begin, Reverend this and Reverend that. Does that, you answer all of those big, big titles and there is no word of God that is coming out of your mouth. You spend all your time in, 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 in doing all other things and thinking that you can buy the anointing. No, 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 no. No, and this sort of people go about wrecking people's lives, wrecking people's homes, wrecking people's future, all in the name that God called me, God sent me, God told me. But we see in this scripture, or uh, permit me to say this, that when Jesus sent the disciples, he gave them, he told them, go and do specific things. It's going to take humility and it's going to take patience for you to wait upon the fulfillment of God's promises in your life. It's going to take humility, it's going to take patience for you to be able to get direct instruction from God. When he says wait, you wait. When he says go to a village, you don't go to a town. When he says, go to a village, you don't go to a city. There are some of you, he has sent you to a village, a very small place, but here you are, in a big city. In a big city because you would like to gather crowd. There are some of you, he just said to you, I only want you to be an intercessor, but here you are, dreaming to open your own church. My God, be merciful. Where is the patience that is needed? And that is the reason why we have so many disjointed people in the kingdom. We have people who will say, oh, my heart is so broken. Oh, I cannot. I recently met some four, four, four ladies some few days ago. I met four ladies and I found out that they have gone out from one church and another church. Four churches within, seven churches within two years. I asked, I said, what is actually wrong? You know what I heard? No, 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 no. The anointing of God in my life doesn't permit me to stay there. I said, what? Seven churches within two solid years. I asked, and they claim to have a call. I said, this calling that doesn't bring out humility in you, doesn't bring patience in you, when you go to those men of God or women of God, you said God sent you there, you cannot stay there. What sort of God is this? He said, the place is defied, the place is not clean, the place is not this, the place is not that. Meanwhile, these people are hanging around, men who married them, who don't even go to church. And yet, they can go into a house of God, and, they, and then they, they, can, they, they can look into my eyes and tell me the places are not clean. I mean, that holiness that they are carrying, why can't that holiness tie out those who are in their homes, who do not even go to church? 
May God be merciful. You see, when we go about para, parambulating or carrying an office we've not yet been caught into, you are going to meet a crash. You are going to crash. You are going to crash. You are going to meet hurt. You are going to meet frustration. You are going to be dogged somehow along the line. You are going to be terminated. Your calling will not find fulfillment. Why? Because you are operating in an office which God has not yet called you. And it is my desire today that the spirit of humility shall come upon you. It is my desire today that you will receive the ability to endure. Because when you can have patience, the virtue of patience, if you can have it, you will be successful as a child of God. You will live a victorious life. This month will be a month of celebration for you. Can I hear a big amen? Are you hearing me, somebody? Can I hear a big amen? These disciples were sent to a village and they went. They went because God is a God of principle. God is a God of principle. God does not make any mistake in whatever he does. They went. Today, 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 when you open the Facebook, you will see many young ministers. I mean, there's nothing wrong in being a young minister. All of us were there before. But you see, carrying all, flashing, you see them laying hands everywhere. You see them carrying down. Every person in Facebook is man of God. Every person in Facebook is woman of God. And you go about wondering, where, where are their spiritual fathers? Who are their spiritual mothers? Who really made them? That you went to Bible school doesn't mean that you are a minister. Or oh, it doesn't really mean that you have been called. Do you understand me, somebody? I, I mean, I mean, we we got to get these things very, very straight. And, and then some some of them even don't have the humility of addressing those who have gone ahead of them or, 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 or with, with, with the right way. They call them by their names. Uh, oh, one of God. Oh, man of God. Every one of us. But let me tell you one thing: we are not the same. Because if you have, when, when that true virtue comes in you, you will be humbled by force. You will surely be humbled. I pray that the Lord will help somebody who is listening to me. You see, many of you are going about wrecking your life because the force that God would have liked to hide and, 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 and deal with and uh, process you before you are being shown to the world. You are already showing all of these faults, showing all of these mistakes to the whole world through Facebook, through every wherever you are connected just to show and make yourself when God has not yet made you. I pray today that there will be somebody who is watching this broadcast who will say, yes, 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 I want to go to the village. I want to go to a hidden place. I want to hide so that I will be in a hideout. Let God make me at that secret place. Not where everybody is. Not where everybody wants to be. I pray that that spirit of endurance, that spirit of humility shall be developed in somebody. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus asked them to go to the village. And Jesus, Jesus told them, he said, when you go, he said, when you go, search for the donkey and it's called. He said, look for it. In other words, it, that what they were to go and find was not just displayed so that they would just grab it and, and run back to Jesus. They were to search for it. They were to look for it. They were to do everything to find it. It was, it was an instruction which they were supposed to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't tell them to go and look for a horse. No. He said, go and look for a donkey. Look for the donkey and it's caught. Go and look for the donkey. He said, you will find the donkey. You will find it with the colt. And then, and then they, they will do. These are the things I want you to do with them. He didn't send them to, a, to, to, to the horse. Because the donkey is a very humble animal. It has patience. It can endure. Today, who am I called to speak to? If you are going to receive anything from the Lord in this very month, please re-examine your motives. Re-examine your life. There are some of you, you have left your donkeys and you are riding on a horse. When God meant donkey for you, you, were, you are riding on a horse. That's why you are having the backslashes all over you, all over, having those bruises and the swollen mouths from those husbands who are beating you and terrifying you. Those of you who are men, that's why they are pouring the hot soups on you. You see? 
throwing, throw, throw, I, I, heard, I heard from a young man, how a young woman would throw pampas on, on her, stained pampas of the child, throw it on, on his face. And I was wondering, I said, whoa, how can this be? My God. You see, if you do not wait for your donkey, you will go, uh, you will go about grabbing the horses. And when you grab the horse, you will, never be, you will never be confident in it, and you will never be satisfied in it, and you will never have peace. Because you are riding on what God didn't call you to ride on. Hello? Hello, somebody? Hello? You are riding on that which God has not called you. So, so some of you, if you have, you have passed your donkey and you, you went and grabbed a horse. When God has brought a husband that is like a donkey, a humble man, a humble man, a bit, just because he has not yet gotten all the money you want him to have, you dumped him. You quickly dumped him and you went for your horse. Your horse who has flashy car, flashy house, flashy ties and flashy shoes. And that, that is the reason why you are not, you, that's the reason why he is still being so flashy and carrying all of those guests around. And then you are in the marriage or in the relationship and you are not satisfied. May the Lord God Almighty help you to re-examine your purpose. You know, you know, you know, I love Jesus so much. Jesus will never cause your miracle to happen at your back. If you do not tarry, you will not receive the virtue of honor. You will not receive that virtue, the gift of the spirit. I mean, it's patience, it's endurance, it's, it's humility, it's long-suffering. Do you have them? Do you have them? Some people will just enter into a relationship and at the slightest offense, they'll just jump out. Why? Because they don't have what it takes to have. They, they have not allowed their character to be processed. And then they come into the marriage situation with the same behavior. They come into their businesses with the same behavior. They also carry it and come into the house of God with the same behavior. At the least offense, they jump out. Those people are not donkeys, they are horses. But as you hear the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God wants to ride. Jesus wants to ride on a donkey, not on a horse. He wants that character to be formed in you. He wants to be sure that you are sure of yourself. He wants you to go through that process of fire. It will not burn you. It will not consume you. But you are going to come out being a better person. Are you hearing me? There are some of you who go about longing to become. Meanwhile, you are are longing to step into what God has not yet called you. Meanwhile, God has ample of time. If, to, to, if, he's, if he has not allowed you to step into that office, does not mean he has denied you. Even though in the sight of men, it will look as if you've been denied. But I'm assuring you this hour, you have not yet been denied. You see that donkey? They were dead. They were tied. They were tied. They were tied. They were in one place waiting and they were seeing other donkeys moving about with their owners. They were seeing other donkeys doing so many things and enjoying the good weather and enjoying the good, but they were in one place. They were just tied in one place. They couldn't move about like the other donkeys. They couldn't enjoy themselves like the other donkeys. That is what is happening to some of you watching me right now. You, you've been longing to do some certain things, but somehow along the line, you found yourself in a restricted environment. You want to be able to function, but it's like you have been confined to a restricted place where you can't move. Some of you already want to begin to preach. You just want to begin to share your, your, your business cards. But God said to you, serve, 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 serve. Be in that church, be in that church. Be, stand with that man of God, stand with that woman of God. And, and then you are enduring and you are enduring and you are enduring. And as you are enduring, it's like nobody is seeing you, you are walking, nobody is seeing you. I want you to know that God sees and at the right time, he is going to reward you. You know, for the sake of time, my God, for the sake of, not that I, I, not, not, not that I lack the message, but for the sake of time, I will be rounding up. But one thing I want you to be reassured is that that miracle that happened to those donkeys, this will happen to you. If Jesus was able to ride on them, and those donkeys could walk on, the, on, on, the, on those, you know, the, the, right, the red carpet is coming to you as well. Your endurance is going to pay off. Your humility is going to pay off. Don't go about showing yourself when God has not yet finished with you. Don't go about flying your business cards when God has not yet finished with you. Don't go about looking for a relationship which is going to hurt you at last. Don't go about trying to get married when God say want you just to, you know, to be with him. To be with him. Jesus has not yet finished with you. Please don't go about desiring just to carry the pregnancy when it is not yet time. Please, 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 please. Don't go about desiring those things. If the Lord 
if he tarries and he will tarry, if he, he will give you what is your desire. And when he gives you that desire, let me tell you one thing. He will give you enough years to enjoy it. You will not, you will not be missed out. You will not be missed out. You, will, you have not lost anything yet. He will give you enough time to endure that which he has promised you. Those donkeys had enough glory. They have enough time to enjoy the crowd and to enjoy the celebration and to enjoy the honor. They enjoyed it. Even as a matter of fact, the donkey and the cart walked on those beautiful red carpets. How about you? When you endure to receive, when you are humble enough to go through the process, God will elevate you. God will bring honor. God will cause you to be restored in that integrity that you want. Somebody. So you have not yet missed anything. In case you've been blessed, you can and call the studio line on 020-3374-160. This is no other person but Apostle Helen Ruth Dokino of River Supply Bible Church. I'm very excited and I love it to always be in your home. God bless you and enjoy this Palm Sunday with the word of the Lord as it, as it has come to you. In case you, 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 you will want to celebrate Easter next week, Sunday with us, please make a call. Call us on 026 Nine seven five four two four. We're gonna have a very good Easter ceremony in our own ministry, Rivers of Life. God bless you. Rain,